Hello and welcome back to No BS. Today we turn to talking about the vice presidential candidate on the ticket along with Joe Biden, none other than Democrat and former top cop of California herself, Miss Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris has splashed onto the scene again this week because, of course, she's been picked as Biden's running mate. Joe Biden is running for the Democrats to be the next president. The election's coming in November, and the season is in full swing. And this VP candidate choice was long awaited, too, actually. This is actually pretty late for a normal campaign to pick their running mate, but Things have changed a lot this year. It's been a crazy turmoil time. Things have had um, to be put on pause. Movie season's been canceled. You know, the virus is sweeping the country. Lots of things are going differently this year. But that's besides the point. Today, we're talking about Kamala Harris. We're going to dive into her background a little bit and just talk about why she's such a funny and interesting choice for the Democrats. I mean, first of all, they've been anti-cop this whole summer. They've been talking crap about the police, saying they're all racist, saying they're all offensive, saying they do bad things to minorities. Like That has been the talking point for a long time now. So for them to now pick Kamala Harris, who was a cop herself and became a top cop, in California, meaning she was in charge of a lot of the cops and the policing rules and regulations and stuff like that. So the fact that the Democrats are picking a cop as their VP candidate is really funny to me. Like that's just the first kind of interesting move here. It's like they've been bashing the police. They've even said all police are racist and offensive. Like I've seen that. I did a video where Francesca Ramsey on MTV straight up said 99 to 100 percent of cops are racist. So that means Kamala Harris is racist too. And it also means that There's a couple other things like Kamala actually said a many bad things about Joe Biden when they were running against each other. Like Kamala was trying to become the presidential candidate earlier this year, but she had to drop out pretty early on because she just doesn't get a lot of support. She's not very popular with both sides. So we're going to talk about more of that today. We're going to talk about her story, her background, why this is a funny choice, which is coming up for a number of reasons. And it's going to be real good. So We're going to get to that soon, but first, let's take a quick moment to check out our sponsor. Hey guys, I'm here to talk about this awesome Pro Police coin that you have all been very interested in recently. We started giving away this Police coin last month and we had a lot of great takers on this offer. Basically, all you have to do is pay for shipping and you could get yourself a very nice golden coin that has engraved police images on it. This is to support our men in blue, to show that we support these heroes who are saving our country, protecting us from evil and stopping all that crime out there, at least the best they can. I know the leftists and everyone want to defund the police, but here at No BS, we're here to support them. And really one of the best ways you can do that is signing up and getting one of these free cop coins. They're free for a limited time. You just have to pay shipping. So if you're interested, make sure you check out the link below today's video. And for now, let's get back to the show. Great. Now that that's out of the way, let's get back to talking about Kamala Harris. We've already talked about her being a cop and that being an ironic choice for the Democrats. It's also an interesting choice, too, because of the whole identity politics of this, which we'll get to more soon. But before we do that, I want to talk about her radical record because they claim that she's a moderate choice, but she's actually pretty phony and pretty much sold out, as Donald Trump Jr. here says. He says, Kamala Harris isn't a moderate. She's a phony politician who sold out to the radical left for power. Her radical record includes banning private health insurance, amnesty and taxpayer-funded health care for illegals, banning fracking, which is a big business, no death penalty for cop killers, and gun confiscation. I mean, this is a really bad sign already. This is parts of her platform that just show how terrible she is. I mean, you can't have your own health insurance. She wants to ban this industry. She wants to give money to illegals and criminals and will also not punish bad criminals who kill our law enforcement, which is just showing how she's sort of almost anti-cop herself, even though she was a cop herself. And then anti-Second Amendment is always a bad choice, especially in America. So this is some of her more radical platform, some of the bad things that people would want to bring up, you know, to consider the fact that she's not a moderate choice. This whole ticket, like Biden is getting more radical too. He used to be a more moderate guy, but both of these people, Biden and Harris, are terrible choices for the Democrats because it just shows how they're going down this far left rabbit hole. They're they're going further and further towards like a Bernie Sanders ticket, which is something like Sanders has already approved of this new ticket and he's supporting these guys. So it's not a surprise that a lot of these woke leftists are excited about it too. 
And they're also trying to defend Kamala Harris as much as they can. But I think it's really hard to do. Like, as we said, she's a cop. She has these radical ideas. She's also spoken ill of Joe Biden. She actually was one of the people that spoke out against Joe Biden, saying he was racist, saying that uh, she actually believed the Biden accusers, like Biden was accused of some misconduct. And she said she believed him. So that means now she's working for a guy who she believes abused people. And it just goes to show she's like morally corrupt. She has no morals or convictions. She just says a lot of things and tries to get herself into power. And it's going to backfire her and her. Like these quotes are going to keep coming back up. We're going to see more things about her background and how they're misrepresenting it. Like they're trying to hide the fact that she was a cop because obviously Democrats are big on hating cops right now. They've been pushing that for months. So this choice coming up now is interesting. And then next, I want to talk about her background, too, which is very interesting. Like, not a lot of people are talking about it. Like, they they actually are mentioning it in, like, inaccurate ways. Like, here's Kamala Harris proven to be a cop. And then you also just want to look at the way they represent Harris because they want to say she's, like, the first black candidate or the first minority candidate. Like, they're always promoting these identities of her. So I think it's important to really get her actual background accurate since they're trying to promote this stuff a lot. And the truth of the matter is Kamala Harris is half Jamaican and half Indian. She's half those two people are her parents. And I think maybe her dad is even part something else. Like she might not even be half black, but basically she's half Jamaican, half Indian. And the reason that's important is they're trying to promote her as this black Asian candidate. I actually saw them label her as Asian and that's something that's come up too. I actually tweeted about this and had some some real smooth-brained leftists try to c- correct me on that. They're like, well, where do you think India is? India is in Asia. India is in Asia. Like, that's supposed to justify it. But that's not really the point. Like, we all know that India is in South Asia. But if you say someone is Asian, you don't usually say they're Indian. Like, that's not something that computes in American culture. Like, I lived in this country for three decades And if you're from India or Indian related, they say Indian, they don't say Asian. That might be something new. They're starting to try and say South Asian now or something else. Like they're trying to get Asian hooked into there. But the truth is that she's Indian and Jamaican by all standards. And the Jamaican part is interesting too. We're going to get back into more details about that past. But the problem with that is that means she's not actually African American. Like she's not actually from generations of people that came to America a long time ago and, you know, suffered through these terrible, terrible labor situations. They were in chains. They were forced to work. Like, that wasn't part of Kamala's history, even though she might try to imply that, even though the news tries to act like she's this black. Sometimes people even misspeak and say she's African-American, but she's not. She's actually Jamaican, which is coming from a whole other part of the continent, and it's a whole other story over there, too, because as it, as it turns out, like not only is Kamala Harris not the descendant of slaves or African-Americans that were products of slavery here many years ago. But in addition, to make matters even worse, Kamala Harris is actually the descendant of slave owners. That's the part that gets really messed up. Dinesh D'Souza brings it out in this tweet here. He says, here are the names of 200 plus slaves owned by Kamala Harris's ancestor, Hamilton Brown in Jamaica in 1817. One of the largest planters in Jamaica, Brown now has a town named after him, Brownstown. So this is list, this is research, this is real facts. Uh, Kamala Harris's ancestor owned slaves themselves. So this is a real contradiction with a lot of things going on in the Democratic platform. Now, I want to also point out the fact that I could see where this is not really fair. Like, we're usually the ones to defend and say this isn't cool. Like, don't bring up people's past and if they're related and they had ancestors who owned slaves. Like, that's not something to go against you. Like, unless you did it, it's not your fault. And that's what we always try to say on the right as conservatives. But this is actually fair because we're throwing this argument back in their faces. Like, these guys try to say all white people are racist and we're all slaveholders and the worst and the worst. And they're the ones that are pushing this on the left. The Democrats are always attacking us for things like this. And they don't even have this much evidence. Like, we're talking about real proof. Like, this guy's got a whole history researched. He's got the names. This is Jamaican Family Search. It's got 
details. He's got the receipts. I mean, this is actually showing that she's a descendant from someone who owned forced laborers. I mean, this is pretty bad. This is pretty damning. I think, honestly, you just got to think about it. What you got to do here is think about if they found this kind of information about the Trump family. Like, just imagine that for a second. It would be on every news outlet. It would be the biggest scandal in the world. They would treat it like Trump had done it himself, even though it was 200 years ago or whatever it may be. This says 1817 is 200 years ago. It's long gone. But the point is, like I was saying, we're not trying to be hypocrites. We're not trying to, you know, say it's okay when we do it. No, we're just holding them to the same standards they hold us. So if they're going to attack us and say everyone has white supremacy and racism, and if you had this problem or this problem, yeah, it's not going to work because it could be turned on you really easily. And obviously Kamala Harris has a lot of skeletons in her family's closet. So that's about wraps up that background talk. I think it's just interesting how they paint her as black and Asian now, even though many would probably call it more accurately Indian and Jamaican And, you know, black kind of implies almost African-American, but that's the point. I think you guys get the point. I explained the Indian thing and the Asian thing. So the last thing I want to end on is this is just a moment from Twitter. It says a look at Kamala Harris's career in politics, prosecution, and more. It's very friendly. You can see how Twitter and all these websites are trying to defend her, trying to prop her up make her look great, but she's actually a terrible person who's done many bad things. Uh, She works in this center out of San Francisco. So the question you got to ask yourself before we go is, do you want the rest of our country to be more like San Francisco? I mean, don't get me wrong. San Francisco used to be great too. There's a lot of cool things there. It has a lot of history, beautiful city on the water, you know, lots of cool uh, hills there and the trolley. And, you know, San Francisco used to be good. But it's really, really riddled with crime now. There's drug addicts in the streets. People are defecating. People are throwing their trash out. Like, it's really, really bad there now. Like, dangerous, overpriced. It's like the most expensive city to live in, which is kind of messed up because as soon as you walk outside your front door, you're paying all this money to live there. And then you got to worry about poop in the streets and drug needles and stuff like that. And they have the worst leaders. So I think that's worth pointing out, the fact that she's from San Francisco and California and how bad it is there. And then on top of that, the last thing I'll mention, this is sort of related, but it talks about her prosecution history. Like one of the big things that Kamala has done is been pro the war on drugs. She's arrested a lot of people who have used drugs like that special green plant that makes you happy, sometimes makes you hungry or your mouth dry. You guys know what I'm talking about. Well, that's probably like one of the softest drugs in the world. It's never hurt anyone. It's not lethal. It's not addictive. But for some reason, it's still got issues in a lot of states, and that's a whole other thing. But the point here is Kamala has prosecuted a lot of people for this green plant, many of them minorities, many of them part of the identity politics group that you know the liberals pretend to support. But that's not even the worst of it. The worst part is she's prosecuted a lot of people because of this green plant. And then we have a video evidence of her going on some talk show saying, oh, yeah, I tried it. Ha, 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 ha. You know, I thought it was fun. I, I tried it once. Like she was trying to be cool on like, I think, the Breakfast Club radio show or something. And she just laughed about it. She thought it was funny. She's like, oh, yeah, I've tried a green plant. Like, who cares? It's fine. It's fine. But that just is so hypocritical, so controversial to just you can't can't forget about that quote. I think that's going to be something that's going to really ruin her career because you can't just arrest all these people for this plant and then say it's okay. And she ruined all these lives and hurt all these minorities and their chances at freedom and, you know, living a life. And then she laughs about it. So it's like, she's very two-faced, very um, filled with Botox faced, by the way, she got a facelift right before this announcement, but that's besides the point. I think that's the last thing we need to get out there. Kamala Harris is bad. This is the VP choice. Uh, You guys have heard a lot of what I had to say. Tell me what you think about all this. Comment your thoughts below. Let's get a discussion going. Tell us what you think about this VP choice, about the Democrats picking a cop who's anti-green plants and kind of arrested a lot of minorities. Also, having this kind of question about her background, the way they portray it in different ways is kind of interesting. And then we can't leave out the fact that she's a descendant of slave owners. That's pretty interesting development. So let's talk about that all below. Thanks for your time today. Have a great day. Hit the like button if you get a chance. And until next time, be excellent to each other. 